a simple brutalism design using free resources. In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through my process for creating brutalism style designs using 100% free assets. I've collected a bunch of sick stock images over on Pixabay, and I've dropped the link in the description so you can grab some too. This sick design was for the incredible I Am from Texas, so if you're into your riffy death metal, then go check them out. Now let's jump over to Photoshop and get cracking. We're going to start by making a new artboard. It's going to be 4000 by 4000 pixels at 300 dpi. Then I'm going to go up to view, go down to guides, click on new guide layout. And then we're going to go over here to columns. We're going to put in two. We're going to go to rows and put in two. I'm going to select margin and then I'm going to make each margin 100 pixels. And this will just help us get our whole composition nice and aligned and everything's going to be balanced on the artboard. Then I'll start to open some of these amazing stock images that I got on Pixabay. In particular, I love this demon lad here. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to copy and paste it and drop it down to the bottom left hand side of our artboard. Now I'm going to take this insane sword and I'm going to throw it there on the right hand side. I'm just going to use free transform by pressing Control and T to change the size a little bit because I'm going to put a frame on it. Now we're going to go over here to our type tool and pick a nice old English font. In this case I've used a Verte Kestra which actually isn't free so I kind of lied a bit. But there's a multitude of free old English fonts out there that look sick. I type out surrender because I'm basing this design on their amazing tune surrendered to the blade and i'm just going to increase the size and drag it up there a little bit now i go into this cool gothic architecture model that i got on pixabay of course and with my marquee tool i'm just making a selection of the top part here i'm going to copy it and then i'm going to paste it onto my artboard i want this design to be simple and brutalist at the same time but with a bit of a medieval metal kind of vibe i drag it to the top of the artboard clip it to our guides i then duplicate that layer and with free transform holding shift i rotate at 180 degrees i then drag Drag the duplicated layer down underneath surrender. See what I'm doing here? Looks kind of nice. Then with our type tool again, I type out to the blade and I use my font, SHM The Storm, which you can get in the Spearhead goodie bag for free. Uh, feel free to download that and use it in all your projects. Happy days. And I then drag that beneath surrender. Now I'm going to start making some frames for my images with a really kind of cheeky and lazy way. You didn't hear it off me, okay? So I'm going to go over to my shape tool and select rectangle and then hold down shift and drag out a square. I'll align it over my picture here in the bottom left. I'm gonna make sure the fill is empty and put a white stroke on it. And I'm gonna make the stroke about 13 pixels in size. I then I'm going to duplicate my rectangle layer. And with the layer on the top, I'm gonna go down to the corners here and I'm gonna type in 256 pixels. And that'll give us nice rounded edges on the top layer. I'm gonna select both of my rectangle layers and I'm gonna rasterize them. Then with the layer on the top, now this is the cheeky bit. I'm just gonna select a hard eraser and rub out three of the round corners. Then I'm gonna select the layer on the bottom with the sharp corners and I'm gonna delete the one remaining corner. Then I'm gonna merge our two rectangles together and as you can see it creates a nice shape with a rounded corner in the bottom left and three right angle corners. And it's probably the quickest way to do it but as I said it's a little bit cheeky and it's not the correct way but hey it works. Now I'm gonna rinse and repeat this process by dragging out a large rectangle around the sword just making sure the sword is nicely centered in it. After that I just name these two layers frame so I know what I'm doing and I move on to filling in the background behind the sword. I got this amazing atomic blast from Pixabay as well. I'm just going to copy and paste that in underneath the frame here. Dragging it to size with free transform and just making sure it aligns nicely behind the sword. Roughly centered. Then with our marquee tool I drag a selection around the frame and with our atomic blast layer selected I just copy and paste it deleting the layer below. So it's just filling the frame. Then I'm going to start filling in some more details and I figured I'd put no escape because it's another lyric from the song. This time I'm using my font Siege Engine which is a nice old English font. It's also in Spearhead's goodie bag link in the description. Go get it. But this time I'm using the vertical type tool and I then play around with my spacing just to make sure each letter has enough room to breathe and the two words are nicely spaced apart. Then with free transform I drag it down and reduce the size of it so it aligns with the square frame on the bottom left. I then just rasterize that text invert it to black and then I put an inner white stroke on it of about three or four pixels after which I rasterize it as well now I figured to fill up more of that negative space in the top left I just use free transform with my two gothic architecture layers selected 
and drag it out nicely to fill up that area. For the space beside Surrender there, I wanted to fill that in as well, and I figured this amazing, like, I don't know, exploded planet <laughs> that I found on Pixabay will do the job nicely. I just used my marquee tool to make a selection, and I copy and paste it, drag it underneath the Surrender layer, and with Free Transform, manipulate it into size, and you can see it actually works really nicely with the curve on the R. If you'd rather make your life so much easier with literally millions of assets, fonts, 3D models, and more, you can use my link in the description to get 70% off your first month subscription to Envato Elements. All right, all right, let's get back to Photoshop. Now we wanted to fill in some of that negative space that's still there, so I've used my Spearhead Chrome logo, and I'm just gonna drop it in. In the finished piece, I actually have the I Am logo there, um, but this is just placeholder for now. I then found these really cool, like, fantasy staffs on Pixabay as well, and I like this one because it kind of has, like, an interesting shape to the top of it, and that, like, swirly sort of handle so i just copy and paste that in and flip it 90 degrees and bring it to the left once i had that more or less centered with my logo and a size that i was happy with i just duplicate it and with the duplicated one flip that horizontal and drag it over to the right hand side i then very quickly just put a, a small black stroke on my logo there just to break it up a little bit from these fantasy wizard staff looking things we have. As I go, I'm just nudging and dragging different layers and um, just sort of feeling out the composition to make sure all the breathing space is nice and balanced to my eye. Again, this is nothing too strict. I'm just feeling it out as I go. Now, I really like this Cycles of the Moon asset that I got on Pixabay. I'm just gonna copy and paste it onto my artboard, rotate it 90 degrees, and drag it in there beside the No Escape, where it's sort of making sure that it sort of has enough breathing space, but also fills enough of that negative space to make it look nice and cozy. At this stage, I was pretty happy with my overall composition and how it was looking, so I just saved my file just in case. Now to jazz up our big Conan the Barbarian looking sword, we have here we just take some of my blood splat assets that you can get in my spearheads goodie bag and i'm just going to copy and paste that and drop it over the sword duplicating it multiple times and rotating it sort of make it look like this you know blade is all gored up from some terrifying combat also like this other free blood splatter that i got so i'm just doing the same thing copy and pasting that and dropping it over my blade just to make it look nice and busy. When I thought this weapon was suitably doused in blood, I make a selection of the sword layer by pressing Ctrl and clicking on the thumbnail. I then grab our merged blood splat layer and I press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste it. Once I'd aligned the blood in place, I just deleted the layer below. So we've just got blood over the blade, happy days. Now I wanna start chroming up my letters. So I've selected my surrender layer and I go into layer style, into blending options. And I have this nice chrome kit layer styles that I got on creative market a while ago this is cheating i'm just going to use this really quickly to chrome up the letters here i'll leave a link for that in the description i then right click on my surrender layer and i go down and i copy these layer styles i then right click my frame layer and i select paste layer style and that puts the exact same chrome onto these frames I then rasterize them and just put an outer black stroke on the frames just so they're broken up a little bit from the art within them. Now I was pretty happy with my overall layout so I didn't need the guides anymore so I go back up to view, go down to show and uncheck guides and that'll get rid of them. I then decided to put the same shiny chromey treatment on the blood. You can see here I'm going into bevel and emboss and just changing the size so it's a little bit more natural looking and I thought that was looking pretty delish to be honest. So after that I go down to adjustment layers and I put a black and white adjustment layer on it. This will make us be able to see exactly what parts need to be popping more and what parts need to get darkened a bit. I then start to go through my images. First I select the atomic blast and I go into levels and I just drop them down a little bit and with the sword I go into levels and bring them up a little bit just so it's a little clearer on the background. I then figured to break it up a little bit more from the explosion behind it I put a nice drop shadow on it. I kept the size at about 27 so it's a little bit feathery if you know what I mean. I then go down to our image with our demon boy out here and I just bring the blacks down but bring the whites up quite a lot just to make the brightness and contrast kind of similar to our explosion and sword. I then merged our gothic architecture layers together and I go into levels and whack the whites up because they were a little bit lacking in the contrast department. I then drop the blacks down just to get it nice and crispy. And finally on our destroyed planet I go into levels and I bring the mids up quite a lot and then I bring the whites up a good bit as well. I can then turn off our black and white adjustment layer and see the color that we're working with. Now I decide to clean up the edges of 
our images beneath the frames. I just do this really quickly with a hard eraser. Then I grab our surrender layer and I put an outer black stroke of 13 pixels on it just to break it up a little bit from the architecture beneath it. And with that, I figured it's now time to get onto some camera raw and texturing this up nicely. So I use our atomic blast layer first. I go into camera raw and I open color. And I just bring the vibrance down and the temperature down a little bit to make it a little bit more blue. I then go into effects and I crank the texture up and crank the clarity as well. And you can see, I love doing this. It brings out so much crispy detail in our images. Following that, I rinse and repeat on the demon layer, but it came out a little bright. So we just go into levels and bring them down. Then I grab our sword layer and do the same thing. It also turned out a bit bright. So again, going into levels and bringing the blacks down. That just retains a bit of the contrast that we want. Rinse and repeat with most of our layers. You can see it worked perfectly on the planet there. So I move on to our Gothic architecture. That also came out a bit too bright. So again, I go into levels and I bring the blacks down quite a lot. I then take our cycles of the moon layer and I open up camera raw again and I crank the texture to 100 and I crank the clarity to 100. That's because I want as much contrast in this as possible because it is a black and white layer. Now I figured that no escape lettering was a little too lacking in white. So I decided to make it red as well as surrender. Or just make a quick selection of it by pressing control and clicking on the thumbnail. And with that selection, open I press shift and F5 which opens up fill I then go into color and with the eyedropper I select a nice red from our surrender layer I click OK and boom filled in our letters red and it looks much much better the odd one out here was my blue chrome spearhead logo so I just open up hue and saturation and I fired the hue slider all the way to the right, which fits so nicely with the rest of our design. And I was pretty damn happy at this stage with how everything is looking nice and crispy and detailed. So I just saved this file as a PNG. And now we're gonna move on to the effects and make this look like a really vintage t-shirt design. Now to get started with all of our sick effects we're gonna put on this, I've just reopened the PNG that we saved back into Photoshop. I'm gonna right click on my layer and click duplicate layer. And with our duplicated layer selected, we're gonna go up to filter. We're gonna go down to pixelate into crystallize and click on that. Then we're just gonna play around with the cell size. In this case, I was thinking five looked pretty good. And as you can see, that's just gonna grunge up our image a little bit. You can see on the lines in particular, it gives it that perfect imperfection. After that, we're gonna go down to this little plus sign here, which is make a new layer. Then we're gonna press shift and F5 and select white with our white layer selected we're gonna go up to filter then we're gonna go down to noise and click add noise i'm gonna put my amount at about 30 percent then i'm gonna go down to distribution and make sure gaussian is clicked and monochromatic then we're gonna go over to our blend modes and go down to multiply and as you can see this will make all of these little black noisy pixels grunge up our image further now we're gonna put some adjustment layers on this bad boy and get it looking the business so we're gonna go down and we're gonna click posterize then going over to levels i was thinking that maybe about eight was looking pretty good the less levels you have the less blending gradients in the image itself so it's really up to your taste now we're gonna put another adjustment layer on it this time it's going to be levels just so we can play with our brightness and make sure everything is looking nicely i just bring the mids up a little bit to make the whole image nice and clear now for a third adjustment layer in this case we're putting a hue and saturation adjustment layer on it you can see here, this means we can play around with our color. I thought I'd just bring the hue down a bit to the left, take a lot of the warmth out of the image, and then I drop the saturation just a little bit as well. Now we're gonna put a nice bit of texture on it. I got this sick plastisol texture from Texture Labs. Great YouTube channel, by the way. I'm gonna copy and paste it back onto my artboard, making sure that it's above our adjustment layers. I then make it black and white by pressing Control, Shift, Alt and B, press and enter. And then I just play around with the placements a little bit. Again, putting the blend mode on multiply. Then I just go up to image into adjustments and into curves. And I just bring the whites up a lot and the blacks down a little bit, getting a little bit more contrast into our texture. And as you can see, this is already looking ridiculous. I then opt to go back to post rise and drop it down a few points. I was thinking that six levels was actually looking the best to give it that old school sort of vibe. And again, I go into levels and just bring the whites up a little bit to make sure it's nice and poppy. Once I was happy with that, I make a selection of all of my layers and then I duplicate them. I then make a selection of all the new duplicated layers and I right click on them and say merge layers. Then with my marquee tool, I just make a selection of the square artboard. I copy and paste it and then I go into filter, into camera 
my raw filter and then I go into effects. I then just nudge my clarity and my texture up a little bit and I bring the whites up as well. I also decide to bring the temperature down a little bit to get a little bit of that warmth out of it, just further playing on that sort of old school vibe. And finally for the cherry on top, I get this cool square paper texture. It's kind of like a vinyl cover or something sick. Then using free transform, I just drag it out and increase the size of it over the top of my design. Go into my blend modes and go to screen. And that just gives us that really classic record sort of vibe. And I love it so much. And as you can see, that design wasn't too busy and it wasn't too difficult. I hope this really helps. So now we're on to the glamour shots. So I hope that one was helpful. Make sure you go over to Pixabay, grab a load of free stock and assets and make some killer designs with them. If you wanna grab my free assets pack spearheads goodie bag, the link is in the description. Then jump into the Scrap Heap Discord and show us what you've been working on. The link is also down below. And if you're watching this one the day it comes out, then I wish you and your loved ones a happy and relaxing holiday season. And I'll catch you all in the new year with some new videos. Big love guys, peace.